Hey everyone, and welcome to 1.21 gigawatts. I am Peter, and that is not Matt. It's Ginger here, and there's other things going on. That's Connor. Connor's here. It is. I am. So why is Connor here? Because Connor just happened to see a movie that I also saw, and we thought we'd, we thought we'd talk about it, even though it wasn't necessarily something that was on the the the, the must see, the must get to sort of review schedule. It was kind of like, oh, we both saw Life. Let's talk about Life. So we're gonna talk about Life. The, the movie, not just in a general roundabout chat about life itself. Yeah, but I, I like how cynically you can sound when you, you, you're like, life, life is a mundane, boring experience that just kind of concludes with a whimper. Is that your opinion on the movie, or just in general? Watch for both. That's the, <laughs> that's the beauty of it. <laughs> it's the beauty of it. So, Life is a new science fiction film. Stars Jake Gyllenhaal, Rebecca Ferguson, Ryan Reynolds, a few other sort of recognisable faces. A uh, Japanese character, like I've seen him pop up. Yeah, I've stuff. definitely seen him in a few uh, places. He- Hiroki- Hiroyuki Sanada, uh, his name is. Uh, proper Japanese name, but he- he's popped up in a lot of stuff. Uh, I know his face. But, uh, so yes, this is basically a alien knockoff. But with like a sort of mixture of like gravity esque kind of setting. That that's pretty much how I describe it. It's alien meets gravity. Yeah, uh, that's that's basically what it is. We'll start spoiler free, of course, and we'll give you warning before we go into spoilers about halfway through. So don't worry about that, uh, and we'll we'll get into it. So as I kind of implied, I did not like this movie all that much, which is a little bit surprising because it's kind of right up my right up my alley. And I enjoyed it a fair amount. I mean, I, I, it's, it's certainly does not reach the heights of either of those other two movies that it's aping so very clearly. But I had fun. I was just making sure people could read my mug. As a, I mean, sure, I, I think it's backwards, but well, you, 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 the picture of the cat is the important part, right? That's, I mean, I suppose. Let, let's be honest here. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I like. Obviously, I love Alien. I love Gravity. <laughs> I love both those movies. Uh, I love science fiction B movies. I love monster movies. I like everything that this is kind of trying to be. Uh, essentially, how I would describe this: it is a B movie that, for some reason, has a hundred million dollar budget and has proper actors in it. You yeah, pretty much right, and that's fine. That's okay. There's nothing wrong with that, and I'm I'm okay with uh, B movies getting some proper attention and love. But I think for me, where it kind of falls down is that it takes itself so seriously, and the monster stuff is so like derivative and goofy yeah. and like kind of old school like i'd be fine with that if it was kind of more fun and goofy but it's not it takes itself really seriously but the fun and serious stuff's not really good enough to make it feel like a proper good film either it's kind of in this weird murky middle middle ground but it's not quite committing to either thing and then i could almost be okay with that because i mean technically you can look at alien right and you can say alien all right that's technically just a b movie with uh and it's got a proper budget and it's got good actors and but i think what alien has on top of that though is it has good design and it has good direction and i think that's where this movie really falls down i mean i don't agree on the design but i think it, it's to a fault that it's just so realistic in general design i mean i know that they spoke to nasa about oh how what would you be doing to that they asked about the future plans for the space station mm. and so it's basically just real plans that they've mocked up and made i'm thinking more of the design of the monster not the, the ship See, I kind of like it. I, I like did, the, I, the, I like what it is in sense of. I mean, you don't see the monster in in the trailers, do you? No. So I st- no. So I don't want to ruin what it is, but well, it's. We'll talk about that more in spoilers. But I, I yeah. will say I was not keen on it, and I, I think because it evolves a little bit throughout the film, and by the time we get to its ending state, I thought it looked really generic. Uh, I thought everything that was unique about it, it lost as the as the movie went on. Interesting. I definitely don't think it looks unique as a monster, but I like what it does in relation to being a life form, if that makes sense. I get it. I get it. But again, this is where it kind of conflicts for me, where I'm like, okay, yeah. I, I can appreciate the attention to try and make it feel more real and giving it this kind of more gravity. Because do you know what I feel like this is? I feel like for three years in a row, we had big science fiction, sort of heady science fiction movies around October, November. We had... We had Interstellar, we had Gravity, and we had The Martian. Not in that order, but it was the same yeah. rough time each year. And I Martian feel like... was quite a bit earlier, wasn't it? No, same time. Oh, okay. It was like October. Yeah, I Fair enough. Maybe, maybe September at a push, but it wasn't... Oh, yeah, it's yeah. It's that time of year. 
And I feel like this was supposed to be Sony's attempt at that, and they wanted to get it out then, but for whatever reason, it didn't make the, the time yeah, they had yeah. to push it. And we got it in uh, March instead. And okay, fine. And I think that's what kind of what we're we'll trying to cash in on. And yeah. I'd have been fine with that again. Like, had, had it just been like a sort of fun monster movie, but it doesn't isn't fun in that way. Honestly, for a lot of the movie, I was kind of bored. Well, oh, man, I wasn't at all. Uh, and that, that's kind of where I, I left up, and I, I, it all comes back to that core, that core conflicting kind of thing for me, where it's not really doing any of the one things that it's sort of aping well. It's that's... it's it's not exciting and well directed enough, like Gravity, to make that exhilarating. Uh, so in fact, sometimes the the it, it was like they were trying to do fancy stuff with the camera work, where like yeah, oh, there's lots of like uh, one shot yeah. things where it's clear where the edits are. It's clear where the edits are, and I wouldn't mind that so much. But the problem is, is like well. So much of it's get edits and it's so much of it's CG because it is like kind of shit space station yeah. that it just feels kind of disingenuous. But more than, more importantly though, like again, I'd kind of be okay with that if it was still exciting to watch. Honestly, for me, some of the one, especially one at the start, the the the, the, yeah, the yeah. movie kind of opens. Once we go inside the space station for the first time, it kind of has this big one-er as it introduces you around the ship to the various characters, mm-hmm. which I like that idea. Uh, but I thought just the camera would just occasionally go upside down, and I get I get that they're trying to show the the whole you know no gravity you're you're in a vacuum and this is what it's like being weightless. Honestly, it was just kind of uncomfortable to watch for me. Like I, I was. See, this is where I'm, I'm going to defend this a little bit, especially that point about it being upside down. There were a good few points where I was like, you know, you're watching characters discuss something that's going on, and they're confused about what's happening, and the camera's just upside down. And it's really disorientating, but I kind of like that because it made me kind of feel how they are in the sense that I'm also not, I'm, I'm unsettled. I'm not, it's not right. And it, it made me, it, think, it, it helped me get in their heads a little bit more than most of the dialogue, admittedly. It just, for me, it felt sloppy. Like, it felt like the director was trying to go for something. He was trying to be mm. artistic. He was trying to do something, think outside the box, but he didn't stop to think. How how is this going to actually flow on screen when it's when it's done? Yeah, yeah. And for for me, it, it just there was times when I'm like, this direction is just not exciting. Sometimes it was just kind of basic and fine and forgettable, and other times it was actively doing something that annoyed me. And nice. not not in principle, just in this is kind of uncomfortable. Like, uh, uh, see, I, I agree that at times it was uncomfortable, but I felt like. I enjoyed it being uncomfortable because it, like I said, it made me relate to what was going on in their heads. I think for for a movie that's set all in one station, and it is, it's pretty much all the one station, the, whole, yeah. the entire thing. I I thought it was really strange how okay, I recognise obviously you recognise the lab, you recognise where they sleep, but I didn't really feel like I knew those places. Like I feel like mm. you you go back and you watch Alien, and I, I hate to c- compare it to the same movies, but any sh- any movie with a ship like that, yeah. You feel like you know that shit by the end of the movie. You feel like you know the eating quarters. You know where they sleep. You know where this is. You know where that is. And you, you almost to an extent understand how they all connect. Yeah. And as much as I get that you're in space, you're floating around, you would be... The characters would still... This place would still feel like home. It would still feel like that place is there, that place is here. And I never really get that sense of geography. To the point where later on in the movie when they're like saying, oh, the, the, the creature's in here and we have to lock it off in there and, oh, th- that part of the station is now in trouble. I was like... I don't really get a sense of any of this geography from any of the rest of the film. I agree with that, actually. And I think that's a part of the fault of them trying to be so realistic with the, the space station plans that a lot of it ends up looking kind of the same because that's, you know, how it's designed in the real world. Things are meant to just be the same. It's cost effective. It's cheap. And, you know, it's just how it works. Whereas something like Alien or any, anything else with the spaceship, like you say, they design it to look good, to visually be appealing and have its yeah. own character for each room. And and then I think comparing it to Gravity, like okay, that's very realistic, but so so that film's so tense and it's so mm. like you're so inside that one character's head throughout the entire thing that it just kind of works. And I don't think the characters in this are unlikable necessarily. I just don't think there's anything to them. They're just kind of uh, no. I will agree. The characters are by far the weakest part of this movie for me. I feel like again to to compare it to Alien. I mean, how how long do you go just getting to know the characters in that movie yeah. before anything happens? What, close to an hour? And think about how subtle that movie is in introducing its characters. Whereas here, it's like, oh, this guy just had his wife just had a baby on Earth. Oh, yeah, pull yeah. Out the heartstrings. I feel exactly. Like you know him I mean, now. it does all this. I mean, the action starts about half an hour in, I believe, 
And so you, there's about the same amount of cast members as Alien, probably, on the ship. And I give it you, take, you, yeah. you don't really get to know them in the same way that you do in a movie like that. And I think that's where it falls short most for me is that I never truly cared about any of them. It's like I yeah. get a general sense of who they are, but not on a personal level. Like I say, Alien actually tells you far less things about the characters, but you know them all better as people. Absolutely. By the time things get going. And that's much more impressive because it feels less shoehorned in. Whereas here it's like, here's a shoehorn fact about this one person. And they all get one thing. Like, one's just had a baby. One's been up in space and he kind of likes it in space. One's... One's Ryan Reynolds being Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> yeah, one's just Ryan Reynolds. He's just Deadpool in space. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> He's just being Ryan Reynolds. Uh... And it was because again, I, I want to talk about the opening scene because not only did the one or not feel like smooth, or because usually I like one I love a good impressive one oh, yeah. and this this didn't feel impressive to me. It felt kind of clunky. And the whole thing is, is that you know Ryan Reynolds' character is going out to uh, do something outside. He's going on a spacewalk to uh, operate like a, a mechanical arm outside. Yeah, they've uh, got to catch the sa- the samples. The samples, yeah. Uh, and I, I'm I, obviously we'll save spoilers for spoilers, but I just want to talk about how this is shot. It's and because I like what the the director's thinking here, he's thinking, "Oh, we won't go outside with the camera. We'll watch it from the perspective of all the people who are still yeah, inside the we'll, station. Yeah, we'll be with them and and get their reactions and, and feel like they do. And we'll see it throughout the window. But I feel like this, that this, oh, we, we need to make the camera feel like it's floating and constantly being a winner, actually hurt the the tension that is seen. I feel like. If if you had if you sort of cut to them going up to the windows and try to see if things went that, wrong, that's and... what I was about to say. That's my biggest problem with that moment. There is it goes off screen, like you can't see it out the window from where the camera is, and it never goes up to the window. The, none of the characters go up to the window and look around and try and peer out and see it. They just kind of wait and just stand there, and that's that was my biggest problem with that opening yeah. sequence. And and for me, like that's just kind of indicative of the direction throughout. Where I, I, it wasn't always as bad as that per se, but it never did anything that I thought, oh, that was great. Like yeah. there were some moments of good sound design that really added to the the, the ickiness of yeah. some stuff. There's some fantastic sounds actually, and there's there's a one part where it merges beautifully with the score. Uh, I don't know who was working in conjunction with who there in in the editing room, but it was fantastic. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, some good sound design and. Uh, that that's probably maybe my biggest compliment that I'll give the film. Uh, everything else, plot wise, it kind of just went down the beats that I thought it would go down, and it, yeah, it was very much. very predictable. And that's because again, it's a very sort of derivative movie of all these other things. Yeah. Uh, if you've seen Alien or any of the Alien knockoffs, this is another Alien knockoff, but it wants to look like Gravity, and that's pretty pretty much in a nutshell. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I was actually... a nice, nice score though, actually. Yeah, score's not bad. Yeah. There's a few specific things in it that, that I actually really liked. I, I, actually, do you know what? I'm going to I'm going to argue a little bit and say not that it's bad, but kind of like a lot of the other stuff in the film, it feels like a a solid but very typical we were in space score. Maybe there's there's a few interesting for the, like probably eighty five percent of it. I'd agree with that. Yeah. It's solid but typical, but there's these few things like the main themes that like comes up with the titles and stuff. It's this heroic brass theme that. I think is very untypical of of these sorts of movies, and it does some things and twists that later on in some interesting ways. Okay, okay. I never really noticed that coming back myself, but if you, if you you were paying more attention no, to it than I was, something on that, yeah. Uh, but uh, so that so it's, it's an alien knockoff that looks like gravity. That's pretty much it. <laughs> that's that's my short short review of it. <laughs> so I think with that we will get into some spoilers and we'll talk about actual details and characters and. That kind of thing. So, spoilers from this point on for Life. I have to think about the name of the movie there. Uh, it's not exactly a hard title to remember either. But then, maybe it is hard to remember because it is such just a simple word. Yeah, I find those are the hardest. It's like, it's just one word and it has so many meanings. Yeah. Uh, so, it's funny, actually. See, when they first get the sample, uh, well, not first, but it's when they're analysing the sample and uh, our scientist stood, who, whose one character trait is that he's really into science and he's in a wheelchair. But he's not in a wheelchair in space, obviously. Yeah, that's why I like space. Which, again, I feel like that could have been much more of a, like, if he explored that a bit more, if I got to know this character a bit more, that could have been a really interesting... Yeah, I did thing. like the the one moment where it came back into force later on. Because oh, he can't yeah, feel with, his legs, yeah. With, yeah, I liked it then, 
but overall like I say it could have been explored so much more I could have done something interesting with it but instead it was just this is his thing it almost felt weird that uh, Jake Gyllenhaal's character was the one who likes being in space like that's his trait and I'm like show the guy who gets the float up here when he can't walk on earth yeah I think Jake Gyllenhaal's character might be the most disappointing actually because I mean his performance is fine as always there's nothing to fault there it, well no there's one thing to fault there's there's uh, the most of the time he's just been typical Jake Gyllenhaal and he's fine. There's one moment, and I think it's after it's after at least one of them have died, maybe two of them. And Jake Gyllenhaal, they're all making this really like sort of like dark decision, where they're all sort of looking around at each other and they're deciding mm. what we're going to do next, kind of thing. What's the plan? And for some reason, Jake Gyllenhaal had a bit of a smirk in his face, and I don't know why. And it felt so out of place with the scene. Okay, yeah, uh, that's fair. And it really stood out, and I don't know what... It was almost like they had a, a shot from a different scene that they just inserted, because it was like, you know, it was a yeah, friendly scene, yeah. and he had a smirk in his face. <laughs> and that, mm. that, it was so weird. Uh, but yeah, it's just when they're... they're t- one of the first scenes where uh, the scientist is prodding the, the molecule and stuff and he's like all right it's, it's this it's it does all these things it's like every nerve in our system it does all the three basic things on itself and blah 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 and little, little sort of hair things start coming out and he calls it a uh, proto tentacles or something like that and i'm like pro <laughs> expanse <laughs> am i watching expanse is this tie-in oh I, I got very excited that, that would have interested you far yeah. far more i'm sure I, I got very excited for about two minutes yeah. <laughs> because <laughs> it made me think of the expanse and i love that's the expanse a point, actually just while, while we're on that connecting to other media did you see the rumors before this came out because obviously this was kind of a, a hush hush movie and that the trailers didn't give very much away mm-hmm. there was all the rumors that this was actually a secret backdoor tie-in to the venom movie i did not see that and it's uh, yeah that was a big thing that was going around like a month ago honestly that to me, that sounds like... Obviously, it's Sony, so that's maybe why they've made the connection. Yeah, yeah, I think it is. Just that. Uh, to me, though, that feels like someone's just kind of... like Some fans just like, oh, that sounds like close enough that it could... Yeah, yeah, it does. But it, it spread, and yeah, you know, it got around. I was like, it's kind of sad that this is... You know, this is an original movie, which, I mean, right now, at this point of the year, oh, it's been a on. lot of... Hold on a second. Okay. Original's well, okay. a bit much. <laughs> okay, when I say original, I mean not an adaptation or a sequel or a prequel in that sense it's it's heavily inspired by and maybe unoriginal but I'd, I'd almost argue that this is less original in most sequels i mean you, you may be right but <laughs> what i mean in terms of from a marketing perspective okay, sure. when, when they were looking and, at it okay in terms of an ip it's a new ip yes and uh, yeah uh, and when they're marketing it people go oh this this is new this is something different and it's kind of sad that it's the only one really at the minute that i can think of and people still had to force it to like in their heads to tie it into a, another franchise. Yeah, that's a bit of a shame because uh, yeah, we have a lot of sequels and reboots and prequels and stuff. We don't need everything to tie into something. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> but, but yeah. Uh, so here's, I'm really conflicted about the. So the monster at first is like a little thing. Like every time it kills someone, it sort of feeds on them and gets bigger. Kind of yeah. kind of idea. And it's got a sort of jellyfish-like kind of look to it. Not not in shape, but in sort of the material. It's kind of yeah, see-through. it's really like, like translucent, yeah. white kind of... Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, it's got veins. Uh, it's actually, if anything in shape, it's more like a starfish. It's sort of a starfish crossed with a moth kind of thing. At first, yeah. Yeah, yeah until it gets bigger. But yeah. it, So it... It grabs onto the scientist's hand and it's like crushes his hand and his hand gets all crushed and and it's like, oh. beautiful bone crunching sounds. Ah, uh, it's all right, sure. Uh, and it's everyone's like, oh, we can't go in quarantine until eventually uh, Ryan Reynolds is like, nah, sack this, and he he breaks in and he gets them out, but he gets trapped in there. But he actually ends up in the first death, which you know, I guess they were to go for something surprising. One of the names you recognise is one. Of the yeah, first I feel like that's something, again. Aliens kind of like that. It, it reminds me of uh, Scream. Scream. It's like you know, yeah. let's let's kill off a notable name first, so you, you know, to be going, hey, look, no one's safe. Yeah, but at the same time, you go, well, it's still going to be Jillian Hall and Rebecca Ferguson that are alive at the end, yeah. and then of course it was still those two that were exactly. There was a moment. There was a point in the movie when it was those two and the Japanese guy, and I thought. I would love nothing more for this movie to surprise me and have the Japanese guy survive with one of them instead of those yeah. two. That yeah. was a really... never going to happen, that wasn't. It wasn't, but it would have really pleased me at that point because at least it would have done something that I was that I would assume it wasn't going to do. 
and that'd yeah. have been nice because uh, otherwise it is just kind of playing through the beats because oh, it was very predictable even right down to the ending yeah the, the monster obviously gets out of the room even though they're trying the hardest yeah it not goes to. in the vents and then it, it goes outside it, it can it, it can't breathe in a vacuum but it like it can store oxygen long enough that it can survive out there for like extended periods of time uh and that's when the 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 the, the captain goes she's out there on a spacewalk and she she her death's kind of interesting as well because the, the thing kind of crushes her or like our cooling system on the, the yeah so the she suit. basically drowns inside the suit yeah which yeah. is kind of cool I don't, I don't think you see that very often yeah and, and i think every time someone was kind of doing that because she kind of purposely didn't let herself get saved to keep the thing outside to keep the the, the yeah uh, kelvin was his, his name calvin sorry yeah uh, that's what they named it uh because she, she's like sacrificing herself she's like she's like stopping gyllenhaal from letting her in and you immediately get it's because oh she's she's thinking let's play this safe this stops it from yeah from uh, getting inside and whatnot and Gyllenhaal just doesn't understand this he's like why are you not letting me get yeah and I'm like <laughs> and it felt like they kept doing that so, again the earlier scene in fact speaking of, go back to Ryan Reynolds' death because he probably had the most interesting death from a a, a sound, visual perspective visual well. and sound design I think because the the thing goes in his mouth and you just yeah. see like blood start to come out and you hear it's, sort it's of, actually really quite sickening in the sense that. Yeah, you know, sometimes when you you see someone throw up on a movie, and it kind of makes you feel like you you, you wretch a little bit. Yeah, and it was kind of giving me those sorts of feelings without actually seeing anything, just hearing it. Yeah, actually, before that, it kills the hamster. Yeah, poor hamster. That was pretty grim looking. Yeah, it was. I think that's the first time we really see what it does to to gain its size because it goes because it's translucent and it's small enough that we can really see through it. Yeah, yeah, and then it goes bigger because you, you see the the hamster basically. Yeah. It looks it looks like the predators had a go at it basically all the time it's done. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> so, so yeah, the movie kind of plods along. It does everything you expected to. Oh wait, we only have so much hours of oxygen left. Oh, things are getting cold. Uh, oh look, uh, rescue's coming because they got our message before the, the comms went down. Because the, that's the thing, the creature's smart enough to shut off the comms, it's smart enough to uh, use a tool, which actually did make me laugh, seeing the first scene where, because they've got it in this like the container, the sort of yes. box, with the gloves that are sort of, you've seen this before if you've ever seen any sort of scientists work with like, stuff they don't want to like, obviously interact with yeah, and, yeah. for containment. Uh, and that's it's when he's, he's grabbed his hand and he pulls, he eventually gets his hand out and it's all crushed. But the, the, the thing, the, the monster picks up the the little electro shocking device that he was yeah, using. Yeah, that it snapped. Yeah, and it, it snaps it itself and then comes back out so it can cut through the glove. And it shows, oh, it's using a tool. This is smart yeah. smart life here. And then oh, it, it keeps doing things throughout the movie where it's, it's going to the, the really logical choice to get in. It's going to this and... Mm. I can almost argue at the end as well it's, it's smart because it doesn't... Cause, so the, the plan at the end of the two characters... Is that they can't let this get to life, right? Because even when they, they thought get to Earth, ju- what, that's your life. Yeah, <laughs> can't let it get to Earth. Uh, I just messed up the name of the planet. Uh, call me. Uh, so, so even when the the Jalen Hall thinks it's the rescue coming, it's actually they're coming to just push the space station into space because under no circumstance can this thing get to Earth. It's a solid uh, plan. And it's, 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 even before, because they have to use the thrusters to try and like kill it. And they actually they accidentally go into like free fall, well, not free fall, but they they're getting pulled in by the the, the yeah, gravitational yeah. pull. It's like oh crap, we're going to end up breaking atmosphere. We have to use whatever fuel we have left to go back into safe orbit because we can't go yeah. down there. So at the end of the movie, they've got two two lifeboats that'll take them back down to Earth. Basically, just like the, the, the the you know the little pods that from the, all the Apollo missions and stuff that had come down and the gravity yeah. as well. Same little thing, little yeah, little ship that much. lands in the water with the parachutes, all that stuff, and. So their plan is, okay, Gyllenhaal is going to lure it in, because it needs oxygen, and they've got these little oxygen sticks that they they sort of... Oxygen candles. Candles, yeah. Yeah, Yes, they're they're glow sticks, basically, is what they look like. Well, yeah, but they burn hot. Oh, sure. Well, at one point, uh, Ryan Reynolds tries to burn it off with one. Yeah, that's pretty cool, actually. And the thing's pretty indestructible, which is actually one of my other big problems with the monster. At no point does it feel like they've found a weakness or something that could even possibly deal with it. It feels so indestructible that there's just no hope, ever. I agree. I agree. That is a bit of a, bit of a shame. Uh, so, yeah, so the plan is to lure it into one of the one of these lifeboats with, with uh, John Hall, and he'll manually control... Because it's on autopilot to go down to Earth, but he if you manually overrate it, you can fly it out into space, and he'll sacrifice himself with this thing, and 
There's another lifeboat, so she might as well save herself. There's no reason why she has to die. She's the only one left, other than him. Yeah. And so they both go in the the pods, and it kind of plays with your. It plays some tricks on you as a film because it's like, oh, which pod are we actually in? Which one? Yeah, I knew exactly ass? what was happening as soon as you see the the shot where the two of them are in the same shot. Because there's only like one one shot where it does that. Because you see one and then the other, and then you see them together, and then you see one and then the other. Yeah. And as soon as you saw the one where they're together, it's like, okay, I know what they're doing here. Yeah, they've I know switched. exactly where this is going. They've switched. It's hard that it's going flying out into space because they, they hit each other at one point, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so that's knocked her into space. And this, this is what I'm getting back to with the, the monster being smart because it's smart enough that if it keeps Jill and Hall alive when it lands, someone will open the door to help him. It feels like that's an intentional thing. So he lands in the water and you get the shot. The fisherman comes up and looks in and he's like, no, don't open. But it's, they're in Asia, so the guy doesn't speak English. So he goes to open the door and we end in this aerial shot of them in the water. It's kind of a nice shot, actually. It was okay, but I, the, the ending just kind of fell flat for me. Because like, I, I, mean, I seen it coming and it's kind of this thing. I, I don't want to go back to just uh, making fun of Rogue One, but it's, it's kind of a similar idea where this ending would be cutting to me it would be so, like her getting sh- thrown off into space and she's going to freeze to death and die like that would that would hurt if i gave a shit about her yeah, i mean that that's fair i mean i'm not going to agree with the rogue one bit but in general of that complaint i i don't disagree with that yeah okay like you would care it would be a lot more effective if you did care about her and i feel like these two characters that are left are probably the two i cared least about as well they're probably the least interesting two for me yeah, none of them are that interesting, but yeah, they were probably the the weakest because they were, they were, uh, you know, John Doe and Jane Doe, <laughs> typical yeah. typical average people who everyone can kind of relate to, I guess. Exactly. And here's the other thing, and I know that sounds like a stupid thing, right? The reason why gravity works so well with never showing anyone on because I think in gravity you could you could splice in tons of scenes, you could have an entire subplot in that movie set at NASA. With them in the control yeah. room, being like, oh crap, we need to try and help her, like, where is she? Uh, and we could see that their reaction to everything happening. Now, the reason why it was so effective that we didn't have that is because she's on her own. You feel isolated with yeah. her, and they can't help her. It's her fight to get back. The problem in this movie, by never seeing anything down there, is that we're supposed to care that Earth's going to be taken over. And I know this is a stupid thing to say, it's Earth, it's everyone. It's, it's supposed to just be like, oh, you care about Earth, because it's Earth. It doesn't give you a uh, reason to care about Earth in the movie. It doesn't give you a reason yeah. to care about anyone in particular on there. Except maybe, I guess, the Japanese guy's daughter and wife. But, I mean, that's They're kinda... in what? One, one scene on a phone, or yeah. whatever it was. And there's that one scene where they've got the kids asking questions because they're on TV. Yeah, but uh, it's really, I agree, it is hard to care about that, but... At the same time, I like the ending. Even though it is predictable, I like it. And it's like, okay, I'll be down for another one with it on Earth and, and see that. Oh, that's not happening. <laughs> you never know. That's cost $100 million. There's no way this is making enough back to get a sequel. Eh, I know, probably not, but... It's weak. It's weak sauce. I mean, I, I, I like you said, there, these complaints are there, especially the characters. But I had fun while I was watching it. I was enjoying it. What can I say? I, I think I didn't because I've seen enough like these these types of movies, and I typically like them. But usually, and even uh, let's compare it to a slasher movie because the characters in slasher movies are not deep, right? They're non-existent. Just there, they're just there to be killed, kind of like the characters in this movie. Yeah, and that's normally fine because they're fun, uh, and they'll be goofy, and they'll they'll make me laugh, they'll make me smile because they're mm. exaggerated. Or it'll be good because the direction's good, and it'll give me really great shots and creepy like build of tension. And I didn't feel the tension in this. I didn't really feel... I, I kind of felt like it was just going through the motions the entire time. It was like, check this box, check that box. It felt like there was no passion in it for me. That's fair. Uh, and from the director of Safe House, I kind of... <laughs> I'm not surprised that it feels that way, to be honest. Because, again, that was an okay movie. I, I guess that's why Ryan Reynolds is in it, because he was in that movie. Maybe that's why they, they got him for a, a few scenes. Maybe. I've not seen it. Yeah, it was him in Denzel Washington. It was. Right. Uh, he also did Child Forty Four. This, this director. All oh, right. Which looked good from the trailer, but then got completely slammed in reviews. I never seen it. But yeah, I remember. It got torn to shreds in the reviews. Uh, so I, I think I think this is the main problem here for me at least. And I could enjoy it if it's derivative. I could enjoy it if it's just doing beats from Alien and beats from these other movies. But I think the director they've got making this is a workman director. He shows up. He gets a paycheck. He does a movie for the studio. There's no artistic kind of like 
Yeah, that, that's fair. Goal in it, I guess, is what I'm saying. I think, yeah, something that ultimately is gives us a different opinion is I liked the design of the of Calvin. I, I liked when it, you know, it was like a, an octopus thing. And... Oh, I, I don't just mean the monster. I, I just mean like the way it's directed, the way that it's put yeah, together, yeah, yeah, the yeah. pacing, the everything about I, it. I enjoyed just the, the monster itself, Like like whereas you obviously didn't enjoy it that much. You thought it was kind of boring. Whereas I was like, oh, this is interesting. I if like it, this monster design. I thought design. it was generic, actually, once it got going. Because see, see, once it had a face, and it, it, yeah. it, it came up and looked them in the eye before it killed them, and it was like, eh, this just feels like... It, it, it almost looks like the head of the monster from, like, Super 8 or something. They've just shrunk it down. Yeah, yeah, okay. The head bit was a little... Like, the face bit was a little bit too far. I agree with that. But the overall design, the octopus likeness of it, I really enjoyed I think, that. Do you know what I think it is? I think it's just got no character. Like, the Xenomorph has character. Yeah. And this just feels lifeless. No pun intended. That, that, that's fair. It, just, it, just... Feel, it feels so sterile, and I guess maybe that's what they're going for, but it just... It, it it conflicts with the type of, like... And again, it'd be fine if the rest of the movie was doing interesting things, but it's not. It's, it's, a, it's a B movie with them dying yeah. one by one. So the yeah, monster yeah. being this kind of just plain is just kind of hard to swallow and it makes it the whole thing less interesting. Uh, that's fair. The only scene with the monster that <sighs> really bothered me and I felt like, no, nah, I really wish that wasn't there at all was, you know, where I did the, the shark blood thing. Mm, you know, because yeah. you see the blood, like they're like, oh, it can't find us. It doesn't know we're here. And, uh, and then you see the drops of blood floating and it focuses in on that. I was like, I was like, oh, I get it. It's a, it, it'll come for the blood, like a shark. And I thought, oh, that's cool. I like that. But then it did this. It cut to to the alien. And it did this like point of view shot. Oh, every it, every time it did the POV, I was yeah, rolling my eyes. Yeah. I didn't like the yeah, POV. Yeah, yeah, I agree. But this one was the worst one where it was going from blood drop to blood drop. I was like, this was like completely unnecessary because we already got it from you know focusing on the blood before after that line of dialogue we knew what it was and then saw this felt redundant imagine doing a pov from the xenomorph yeah, yeah it'd be weird it'd be no i agree I, I, I agree i don't i didn't like the point of view either it makes sense from predator because he's actually like a humanoid-esque kind of creature yeah uh and he's a hunt he's a hunter in that sense but i just i don't know it, just, it felt weird to me especially since you know it's I, I, i've got this weird screen effect because it's all sort of bubbly and it's yeah, moving really yeah, fast yeah. it just feels really fake and yeah i mean i was okay i mean i never really enjoyed the PFU, but that one was the one that really annoyed me i was like this, this doesn't even need to be here but actually, i don't think i've been I've actually amended the pov as much if it wasn't all the weird screen effects like they were trying they were trying so hard this is what it looks like from his vision kind of thing that it just didn't work for me yeah i think what makes that weirder as well it, t- it tells us how like every cell is an eye and it's like right so we're supposed to believe it just has eyes in the front of its head still and looks forward <laughs> Like it surely it perceives everything around it at once. Yeah, yeah. Which which was what was a bit weird for me with that. But yeah. Yeah, and obviously once it gets to like the second half of the movie, it's a lot of running it, or I say running, sort of like quickly floating into new rooms and shutting the door behind them. Which again, you've seen that a lot before. Yeah, but that's the bit I did really like the sound design. You know where they were sealing it up to to drain the oxygen. Mm-hmm. And you got the the drills and the tape. And that's when it merged really nicely with the score. And it kind of it built a, a rhythmic bedrock, and then the score played over it, and that that was really nice. Yeah. Right. Well, I think I've said everything that I, I wanted uh, to. Oh, I'll just say the, the bit with the the brass theme that I was talking about is is right at the end. Actually, it comes mm. up a few times, but it, it actually plays this really twisted version of it as as it lands on Earth and we see it's in there. Ah, okay. And I was okay. like, oh, that's cool, because it was like this heroic theme at the start, and now it's this kind of twisted evil thing, and I I, I really like that. Yeah. Uh, all right, I think we'll get to ratings then. Oh, needless to say, I mean, I'm disappointed, and not that I had huge expectations, but the reviews for it were looking kind of promising. Yeah, they were kind of been a bit mixed. They were kind of like, yeah, it's it's. It got more mixed good. as time went on, but the, the first like couple of days, like, when the Rotten Tomatoes score first went up, it was like really high. Oh, and really? It, and it was like, oh man, this this might be really good, and then it's just kind of so. Here we are. I, I will say, I feel like I enjoyed it more going. I've seen one trailer, and that was it. I didn't really look at any reviews till after it came out and say, oh, how did everyone else feel about it? But in general, I went in mostly blind. I think that helped me enjoy it a bit more in general. Maybe. I, I, I didn't really have any expectations going in. 
I don't think my expectations were really the problem, though. I, I think it was more... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, just... I've seen a lot of these movies, and so... It, it's fair. It just... It, it felt sharp comparing it to everything else. And obviously, trying not to compare it to everything else, but when it's clearly aping it's, from... It is so it's, hard not to. It's hard not to think, well... <laughs> so, yeah. So, so, for me, characters were next to nothing. Direction was uneventful to the point of it just made the whole thing feel kind of boring to me uh, I didn't like the monster design I, I liked very little of this movie I was just kind of bored it wasn't the worst thing ever like it's not it's not uh, like terrible it's not a train wreck or anything like that it's just kind of mediocre it's which is why my rating is going to be a very very cut down the middle 5 out of 10 that's fair uh, alternatively uh, like I said I've had some problems especially the characters and some of the direction at points but I liked the monster, and I had fun watching it. So I give it a seven. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. So five out of ten for me. No, I actually I actually made some kind of high given how much of <laughs> how, how much I've kind of torn it to shreds. But honestly, it's not terrible. It is, it's it's uh, always competent at the very least. It's competent and no more. And that doesn't make for an entertaining movie, but it does make for a not. You know, it's not. It doesn't make for a bad movie either. If you want to see some of my uh, really upset reviews, uh, check out Streams After Midnight for some uh, the Bye Bye Man, for example, which came out in like January. That was. Uh, oh if you, yeah. want, if you want to see how I sound when I'm talking about a one out of ten, go watch that review. Uh, but there you go. That's uh, that's life. Uh, that is uh, us for uh, this video. Uh, we will be back with more movie stuff. Uh, Ghost in the Shells out soon. We'll definitely be covering that. Uh, some other stuff coming up. Uh, obviously, me and Connor also do the classic movie reviews uh, every week, one or two a week, typically. I mean, we should point out we did do Alien because obviously we did we did do Alien, we did do Aliens. Uh, we'll be doing Alien Three actually next week because we're going through them all in time for the uh, the new one, Alien Covenant. Coming normally, out. I wouldn't bother saying anything so specific, but given how much we've referenced it in this this review, that is that is fair. That is fair. Uh, so Alien Three is coming next week. We've already done the first two. You can check that out. I'll make sure there's a link uh, in the corner at some point for those. So, thanks for watching, guys. Let us know what you thought of the movie in the comments below. Like and subscribe and all that stuff. It helps us out a lot. Get us on Twitter at mailed underscore fuzz for channel updates. Individual Twitters are on... They're not on the screen, actually. I'll tell you what they are. I'm at Wibble89 on Twitter if you want to hear from me on a regular basis. Connor's at ConnorRyan94. And, uh, yeah, but that's us, guys. So, thanks very much for watching. Don't go touching alien life forms. It's, it's a bad idea. We'll see you next time.